As our massive military might awaits orders, the president's reaction turning the usual playbook on its head for many. Well, one retired four-star Army general says the Trump administration should not react the way the Iranian regime would expect. You know, we've got to make sure we're not playing checkers with the Iranians. They're great at checkers, you know, change one piece for another. We've got to play chess. And I think we've got to continually box them into a corner. So I think keeping all the military options on the table, they know that with the decision of the president, uh, a lot of their military resources can disappear. So let's bring in our experts, former chief of staff to national security advisor John Bolton, Fred Flights, and former CIA station chief, Fox News contributor Dan Hoffman. Great to have both of you with us tonight, gentlemen. Here. Okay, so I want to play something from Congressman Mark Green. He's a Republican. Uh, he was sitting here last night as we were getting word about what potentially may happen. Here's what he said about answering Iran's actions. I think the world needs to see, honestly, smoke and fire. I think uh, Kim Jong-un needs to see smoke and fire. Uh, there's been an attack on the U.S. military, and uh, if we don't respond, we're incentivizing future attacks. Daniel, what do you make of that argument? Well, it's true, uh, and one thing I would highlight that we've learned the last couple of days is just how vulnerable our assets in the region are. Our reconnaissance aircraft are vulnerable to Iranian attack, and so if we launch a proportional attack against Iran in response to their mining of the ships in the Persian Gulf and shooting down our drone, we have to be prepared for them to take counteraction against us. I'm sure those are some of the questions the president has been asking routinely of our intelligence community. Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican considered very hawkish, tweets this. I appreciate President real Donald Trump's desire to be measured and thoughtful when it comes to Iranian provocations. What will the world's response be if Iran follows through on their threat to restart nuclear enrichment? I hope the United States will make this a red line. Fred, we know the president talked a lot during the campaign and even mentioned in the Oval Office this week he doesn't want to be in wars. He wants us to pull out of those things, those overseas incursions. But I know um, when you confront a situation like this, when you actually become the commander in chief, sometimes the reality of what you're facing may be different than what you campaigned on. That's right. Look, this is a president who's trying to balance his promise to get the U.S. out of wars and not to start new wars with the reality he's probably going to have to use military force if Iran continues down this road. You know, if Iran starts enriching again, I don't consider that a red line because I think Iran was cheating on this nuclear deal so badly. This was coming anyway. I think the president's trying to be careful. He's trying to be restrained. And last night, frankly, Iran dodged a bullet. They know military force is on the table with this president. He's just taking his time and waiting for the right moment if he has to use it. Was that what this was all about, especially the leak that we got? And today, the president confirming that things were in motion but he decided to call it off. Was it about sending a signal or something more or less? Or were we reading too much into it? it? I think what's most important is how Iran perceives it. Whatever it was or it wasn't, it's how Iran perceives the president's actions. And I think that's what we'll be looking for in, in reflections from the intelligence community collection. Did Iran see this as the president flexing our muscle and, and demonstrating that if Iran crosses our red line reaches that tipping point, whether it's enriching uranium to weapons grade levels or launching another kinetic attack, then we're prepared uh, at a moment's notice to strike back. Okay, something from the American Thinker today uh, under the headline, Trump refuses to take the bait mullahs and Democrats hoped he would. They outline all the things the president's going to have to try to navigate here. It says he has to deal with Democrats anxious to attack him no matter what he does. Our allies who want Iranian oil and markets for their goods. The mullahs who want nuclear weapons and the end of sanctions and friction among our allies and his base, including many hawks who crave retaliation, if not war. It's complicated. On the other hand, there are uh, many Americans who are deathly afraid of a war with Iran. And we've seen them on this network today. Tucker Carlson is extremely upset that this president's going to start a war with Iran that is unwarranted. The president has to weigh all these things. I think he's weighing his options. He's not going to use military force unless absolutely necessary. And, 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 and I got to tell you, the president said he did not want to kill 100 to 200 people. Uh, in retaliation for the destruction of an unarmed drone. Well, God bless him for that. I think that was actually the right answer. But if an American pilot is killed, if a U.S. Navy ship is hit, is hit by a missile, it's a different situation. All right, Fred and Daniel, thank you both for staying up late with us tonight. Good to thank be you. here.